ready to hop on your bike and pedal back to childhood. Oh, yeah. Today's deep dive mm -hmm. is taking us straight into the heart of E.T. the Extraterrestrial. We're going beyond just rewatching a classic. We're unearthing why this film still hits us right in the feels after all these years. Right. You yeah. know? Yeah. Like, what is it about this film? And we've got a real treasure trove of sources to guide us yeah. on this journey. Uh, a video essay from the, the Deep Dive YouTube channel. All right. Some fascinating bits from AT's Wikipedia page uh -huh. and an insightful analysis by Scott Holleran. So much to unpack. Yeah. Okay, so first things first. We've got to address the whole summer blockbuster thing. Okay. E.T. practically screams long summer days. Right. I'm seeing some clues that point to a different seasonal vibe. What do you think? It's true. Yeah. It's tricky because it's so tied to that summer release. Right. But um, yeah. it's a really clever play on audience expectations. Yeah. Sure, it premiered in June. Yeah. But those Halloween visuals from Elliot in his ghost costume to that shadowy opening in the woods. Oh. They're pretty hard to miss. Yeah, it's almost like Spielberg wanted to tap into that spooky, otherworldly feeling of Halloween, but infuse it with a sense of wonder instead of outright horror. Precisely. And it goes beyond just the visuals. Think about the deeper themes. Fear, acceptance, loss, change. They're all woven into the fabric of the film. This resonates with that end of summer feeling, the bittersweet realization that things are changing, that carefree days can't last forever. You know that feeling. Like that little ache in your heart as the days get shorter and summer break fades away. You know, it's interesting. Spielberg actually chose to end the film with a sunset, not a moonlit night like so many people remember. Wow. Right? I know. Interesting. Yeah. That sunset is brilliant. It's a symbol of endings, A and D beginnings, mirroring that feeling you described so well. It's a visual representation of E.T. leaving, but also of Elliot, and by extension, the audience growing up and moving on. Speaking of visuals, Spielberg uses them masterfully to tell this complex, emotional story, especially between Elliot and E.T. The way those two connect visually is pure movie magic. The mirroring of their actions, those lingering looks, those moments of shared vulnerability, it's all so carefully crafted, so deeply effective. It really is. Spielberg really understood the power of visual storytelling. He lets the camera linger on a look, a gesture, a shared moment of silence. And E.T.'s eyes, those large, expressive eyes, became iconic. They were actually inspired by the eyes of figures like Einstein and Carl Sandburg, people known for their wisdom and gentle nature. It's amazing how those small details add up to create such a powerful emotional impact. And speaking of detail, did you know that E.T.'s hands, those incredibly emotive hands, were actually controlled by a professional mime? I did. Yeah. Caprice Roth, to be exact. Her background in mime, a performance style all about conveying emotion through gesture, brought a unique sensitivity to E.T.'s movements. This wasn't just puppetry. It was artistry in motion. It's incredible to think about how much care went into bringing E.T. to life. And Spielberg was equally dedicated to capturing genuine performances from his actors, especially the children. He actually insisted on filming the movie in chronological order, which is almost unheard of in Hollywood. Especially for a film with so many special effects. I know, right? But Spielberg knew that for the child actors, particularly Henry Thomas as Elliot, experiencing the arc of meeting E.T., forming that bond, and then having to say goodbye as it happened on set, oh. would bring out a depth of emotion that just wouldn't be there otherwise. It's a testament to his commitment to authenticity, to capturing those raw, unfiltered emotions that make the film so believable and heartwarming. And this wasn't just any fictional story for Spielberg, was it? Our sources say he poured a lot of his own childhood experiences, especially his parents' divorce, into the film. Absolutely. You can feel that sense of longing, of searching for connection woven throughout the film. Elliot's yearning for a father figure, for a sense of wholeness, mirrors Spielberg's own experiences with his father's absence. Wow, it makes you think about E.T. in a whole new light. It's not just a heartwarming story about a boy and his alien. Yeah. It's a reflection of very real, very human emotions that many people experience, especially as children. Exactly. And that emotional depth is part of what makes E.T. resonate so deeply with audiences. Mm -hmm. It taps into something universal, something primal, something that transcends age, culture, and even species. Speaking of which. Speaking of which, did you know there's a surprising connection yeah. between E.T. Yeah. E. and the Star Wars universe? I did know this. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm so curious. Right. It's a bit of a mind-blowing Easter egg for fans. Mm -hmm. E.T.'s 
species, the Brodo Wasogi, right. actually make a cameo appearance in The Phantom Menace. Hmm. If you look closely at the Galactic Senate scene, wow, you can spot them in the background. I had no idea. I guess I need to rewatch that scene with a magnifying glass. Yeah. So E.T. is officially it's part fitter. of the Star Wars canon. What's really fascinating, though, is how the themes of empathy and connection in E.T. Right. seem to echo the whole idea of the Force totally. in Star Wars. It's an intriguing parallel, isn't it? The way Elliot and E.T. share that physiological link, right. their emotions intertwine. Yeah. E.T.'s healing abilities. It's almost as if they're connected by an invisible energy, mm -hmm. something akin to the Force. Like a cosmic string, tying their fates together across galaxies. Maybe Spielberg was dropping subtle hints all along. Now, while we're on the topic of E.T.'s abilities, we have to talk about that iconic phone home device. Yeah. Pure movie magic, right? Definitely. But what's even more fascinating is that it wasn't just some prop department invention. Oh, really? The design was actually created by Henry Feinberg, a science and technology educator. Really? That just adds another layer to this whole thing. Exactly. Feinberg brought a sense of realism to the fantastical. Yeah. And this blend of extraordinary and ordinary is woven throughout the film. Think about it. Even as kids, we understood that desire to connect with someone far away. Right. The phone home device tapped into that universal longing. It's that unique blend of childlike wonder and sophisticated storytelling that makes E.T. so timeless. It wasn't all high-tech gadgets and special effects, though. The heart of E.T. truly lies in its practical effects, the incredible puppetry used to bring him to life. It's amazing. Right. It's easy to forget in our age of CGI, but back then, <laughs> yeah. creating a believable, emotive alien character relied on ingenuity, artistry, and a lot of talent. Absolutely. And boy, did they have a talented team. Two little people, a 12-year-old boy who was born without legs, and even a professional mime, wow. all working together to give E.T. his unique physicality. It's a testament to the collaborative spirit of filmmaking, mm. and it's a big part of what makes E.T. feel so alive, so present on screen. Mm -hmm. Those weren't just puppets. They were characters imbued with heart and soul. Right. And Ugh. speaking of characters, did you know there's a deleted scene featuring Harrison Ford? Can you imagine wow. Han Solo as the school principal? Right. It was filmed, but ultimately cut from the final movie. <laughs> Apparently, Ford plays the principal, and he's reprimanding Elliot for his behavior in class. No way. Yeah. I bet that was an interesting acting matchup. Young Henry Thomas going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Harrison Ford. What happened in the scene? <laughs> well, as Elliot is getting this lecture, his chair suddenly starts rising off the ground. Oh, my God. It turns out E.T. is upstairs with Gertie, levitating his phone home device. Oh, wow. And he accidentally causes Elliot's chair to float, too. That's hilarious. Classic Spielberg, that blend of the mundane and the fantastical. Right. But I can see why that scene ended up on the cutting room floor. Spielberg himself said that including such a huge star like Harrison Ford would have shifted the focus of the film. Yeah. E.T. and Elliot's relationship is the heart of the story, and anything that distracted from that had to go. Right. Sometimes less is more. Definitely. Mm hmm And speaking of less is more, let's talk about Spielberg's controversial decision to digitally alter E.T. for the 2002 oh, yeah. re-release. Remember when he replaced the guns held by the federal agents they with walkie-talkies? The infamous walkie-talkie edit? It sparked a huge debate about artistic integrity and whether it's okay to revise a film for a modern audience. It's a tricky issue, right? On one hand, you can understand wanting to make the film less violent, especially for younger viewers. But on the other hand, it feels almost like erasing a part of the film's history, its context. Exactly. And Spielberg eventually admitted that he regretted making those changes. Really? He realized that E.T. is a product of its time and that those elements, We're even it. the ones that make us uncomfortable today, are part of what make the film what it is. It's a reminder that art doesn't exist in a vacuum. Right. It reflects the world it was created in, even with its flaws. And E.T., for all its fantastical elements, is ultimately a reflection of our own world. Our need for connection, our capacity for love and loss, our hopes and fears for the future. It's that balance between escapism and emotional realism that makes E.T. so enduring. Yeah. It allows us to step back into that childlike sense of wonder yeah. while also grappling with some pretty complex themes. Which brings us back to the film's core message, the enduring power of letting go. We've talked about how E.T. blends summer vibes with deeper themes of change and loss, explored Spielberg's visual mastery, and even unearthed those mind-blowing Star Wars links. It's true. We've delved into the magic of practical effects and grappled with the ethics of altering art. 
And through it all, what emerges is this profound meditation on the nature of connection, yeah. how it shapes us, sustains us, right. and ultimately how we learn to let go when it's time to say goodbye. So what does this all really mean? Why does a film about a boy and his alien best friend continue to resonate with us decade after decade? Because at its heart, E.T. is a story about belief. Belief in the power of connection. Mm. Belief in the magic that exists within us and around us, even in the most ordinary of places. It's a reminder that it's okay to embrace those childlike feelings of wonder and awe, no matter how old we get. It's like that feeling of seeing fireflies in a jar for the first time, right. or gazing up at a sky full of stars. Yeah. That sense of awe that makes you realize there's so much more to life than what we see every day. And E.T. reminds us that those moments of wonder aren't confined to childhood. Right. They're always there waiting to be rediscovered if we're open to them. It's about finding the extraordinary within the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Like E.T. doesn't land in Times Square. Well, he shows up in a suburban backyard. It's those unexpected moments of connection that can change everything. And the film reminds us that those connections can come from the most unlikely places. It's true. A lonely boy and a stranded alien brought together by circumstance, teaching each other about empathy, compassion, and the beauty of accepting change. It's that simple yet profound message that sticks with you long after the credits roll. It really does. E.T. isn't just a movie. It's an experience that stays with you, like a touchstone from your childhood, that you carry with you into adulthood. Yes. It makes you wonder. It does. What seemingly small moments from your childhood sparked that sense of wonder and possibility? Right. Those experiences that felt magical at the time, mm -hmm. maybe even insignificant to others, but held a special kind of meaning for you. Perhaps a moment of deep connection with nature, a shared adventure with a friend, a book that transported you to another world. It's true. Those seemingly small moments can have a profound impact on who we become. Right. Shaping our values, our beliefs, yeah. our very sense of self. It's like E.T. is giving us permission to tap back into that childlike sense of wonder, Correct. to find meaning and magic in the everyday. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I encourage you to reflect on those formative experiences from your own life. Yeah. What seemingly insignificant moments, when viewed through the lens of your adult perspective, might hold a deeper meaning. Maybe you'll be surprised at what you discover. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the heart of E.T. the extraterrestrial. And remember, no matter where life takes you, E.T. will always be right here reminding us to keep believing.